Welcome back to a brand new episode of Mastering Programming. In today's episode, we're going to be using uh, OpenAI to create something so cool, and that is an iOS app that actually uses AI to answer problems, math problems, written problems, just like these ones. Now, I'll actually show you how you can connect your iOS app to OpenAI in general to create things like ChatGPT that can answer any sort of question or even just communicate with you. We're going to be using the exact same technology that ChatGPT uses and I'll teach you how to create an entire iOS app that uses it. That's how powerful this app will be. Um, to give you an example real quickly of what we'll be creating, I created this template over here and I'll start by just entering the question. So I'll say something like Amy has five apples, Steve eats two of Amy's apples, how many apples does Amy still have? And once I click on answer question, you can see that it straight away calculates that Amy has three apples left. Now, obviously, this is not the only kind of AI that you can use. You can even come over here and change this prompt from answer the following problem to leaving it empty in which the person can actually ask any question, or you can change it to write me the following blog and it will write the blog based on whatever the user imports. I'll show you exactly how you can do that right in this episode. Without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back guys. Now before anything, I want you to know that I have done um, tutorials on open, on open AI and how to use AI in your projects. Um, I think I've used them on uh, Python multiple times, but now I thought I would also show you how you can do it on an iOS app. So make sure you check out these videos, they will help overall. Now before anything, let's actually go to OpenAI and once you create an account, so let's say you go to OpenAI Playground. Now what you need to do in order to do this is actually just create an account with OpenAI. You can see that I'm already logged in, so I do have an account. And you will need to go to uh, View API Keys, uh, which will take you to this page, and then create a new secret key. And I obviously can't show you that secret key because it means you'll be able to use my bill basically and use it for free. And it is actually for free at the beginning, so don't worry, not, you're not going to start paying as soon as you make this app. It's for free, I think, for the first month or up until like $18, and then you will surpass that. Now, what I'll be using from OpenAI right now is again the API key and I'll show you exactly where to put that but also the playground and the playground is so cool because it gets you, it allows you to test your um, logic basically or what you want to create without having to first go and code and do it. For example, like I mentioned, you want to create an app that allows users to basically ask written math problems and get them solved using AI. And so to do this, I'm not actually going to be changing anything on the right side here. But all I'm going to do here is I'll come over here and I'll say something like answer the following problem. And then I'll put two dots like that. And inside of here, I'll give it an example of a problem just to see if we'll actually be able to do it. So I'll say something like Amy has 10 apples. David eats two apples from Amy. How many apples does Amy still have? So this is the question that I'm asking. And if I click on submit, you will see that the AI will basically go through this and calculate how many apples are actually left. Now, we want our program to be able to answer these kinds of problems, at least the first one that we're going to be creating. So what I'll do now is I'll remove everything up until that first prompt, and then I'll click on View Code. And once you come over here, you can actually change it to any other language. But this is, again, just to show you what, you can, what the details are if you're going to be using it in Python, for example. But we're not doing that. We're using it in Swift. So the first thing I'll be doing is I'll go to my Swift project and you can see it's just empty, like it's just the very beginning. And what I'll do now is I'll actually create a struct and a class that allows us 
to use OpenAI just how we did with Python. Now, to do this, I am going, it is a lot of code, <laughs> so I'm going to copy it and then I'll go over it really quickly. So here I am, I have them ready, I'm going to paste them. And you can see that they, we've got a struct and then we've got uh, a connector, a class API, OpenAI connector. Now inside of the OpenAI URL, the API that we can use, the URL for the API that we need is the following. And again, I'll post all this so that you can copy it as well. So you will need to paste this URL inside of the OpenAI URL. And for your OpenAI key, that is your uh, API key, the one that I told you you need to create. And again, I won't be able to show it to you, but I will paste it. And then I'll just cover it with something so that you can't see it. But what you need to do is you need to paste it somewhere over here, exactly on line 30, just like this. Now. I'll continue moving forward just to explain what happens. Now inside of that class, the OpenAI class, on line 33 we've got an execute request. And this allows us to actually trigger that prompt, just how we did over here with answer the following. It basically, that function is responsible for reading or submitting this prompt along with the question that the person asks, and then it returns an answer for you if there is any. Now over here, you can also press a step prompt. And check out the JSONs. And this also allows you to actually trigger the post command that you that will allow you to interact with the OpenAI uh, with the OpenAI API. <laughs> now, as I keep scrolling forward, here we've got another struct, which is OpenAI response handler. And that allows you to basically get that response back, decode it from just being a JSON into text, and then actually do useful stuff for it with it. But as you can see, we're getting two errors, and that's because we're missing a few things. For example, we're missing another struct called OpenAI response. It will be of type codable. And inside of here, we're going to be putting an ID, var ID is equal to string, var object is equal to string as well, var created is equal to int for integer, var model is equal to string, and finally var choices is equal to an array of choice, just like this. Now you, we're going to get an error because it will say we can't find it, so let's go ahead and actually create that kind of struct as well. So we're going to say struct choice. We're going to say it's of type codable. Inside of here, we're going to have different things. So text, and that is equal to string. We're going to have index, and that is of type int. We're going to put var log probs, and that will be of type string. We'll also leave it as a question mark because we're not sure if we're always going to be getting that back. Finally, the finish reason, and it will be of type string. Now, there is one more thing left to do, and that is we need to find a way to communicate with our content view and our OpenAI connector. So to do this, I created an extension that will allow us to actually view the information from our class. There we go, and you can just paste it in. So now that we've got that ready, it's actually time to go ahead and use it. And yes, that's how simple it is to use this. Now all I'll be doing is I'll be going all the way to the top here. And I usually like going to the top so I can just straight away start creating my variables. So it will be at state var prompt tf. You can call this anything else you want that you might find more suitable. At state var answer and this will carry the actual answer that we will get back at state oops var degrees and this will allow us to change the degrees just like in open AI here the playground where you can change the temperature but for now I'll leave that as 0.0, .0. 
After that, there is one more thing that we can do. And sorry, I'm just adjusting my mic because it is coming on the way of my keyboard. I hope you can still hear me properly. And that one will be let the open AI class to be equal to open AI connector. There we go. Now what I'll do is I'll actually remove everything inside of that VStack. And instead what I want to create is I want to create that text um, holder or sorry, the text editor. So what I'll do is I'll create a Z stack. And the reason I'm doing a Z stack is because I want to have like, um, let me just show you. <laughs> I want to have placeholder text. And for some reason at the moment, SwiftUI doesn't allow you to automatically have placeholder text like that. So let's go ahead and do that here manually using a Z stack. So I will say text editor, start of here. I'll put text and I'll bind it to the prompt so that way every th time something is edited on the text editor it gets updated here in the variable at the top and I added some customization for example for the font I want it to be of type body and we can remove the extra parentheses over here uh, I also wanted to give it a corner radius of type 10 uh, of value 10 sorry I want to give it a frame and inside of that frame I just want to control the height to be 200 for the width I want to take the full width of the page now here's what I will do I want to make sure if the user enters something then we want to remove that placeholder text otherwise I want it to be shown so what I'll do is I'll say if prompt f so if the user didn't enter anything dot count is equal to zero then what we need to do is we just need to give that placeholder text. In my case, I'll just keep using that example just to make it consistent. And I want it to be in gray. So let's actually quickly have a look at how this looks like. So if I click on run, I'll just wait for it to run on my phone. There we go, we've got that text. And if I click on it, start typing you can see that it gets removed straight away so now let's go ahead and create the text at the very top with the answer and that will literally just have the answer inside but we don't want to show the answer unless there is an answer so we can say something like if answer dot count is not equal to zero then create text and inside of here place the answer basically awesome now what else do we need to do well we need to create a button that allows us to actually trigger the open ai request so for this i'll come over here and i'll say button action i will then go over here and create this and i'll add text for that button that text will basically just say answer question and instead of our button what we need to do is we need to say answer is now equal to and we're going to call that function from openai that allows us to process that prompt so let's go ahead here and we will say the openai class dot process prompt now for now let's actually leave this open the only thing that I'll do is I'll add the entire prompt from the user. So right now we're actually creating this so that it shows everything inside um, and we actually need to do this. There we go. Every, anything that the user asks, it will create. If you ask it to create your blog, it will do so. If you ask it to do a math equation, it will do so. And then we're actually going to refine it so that it's only for math questions or at least for tries to be for math questions. Now let's go ahead and run this and see if it will work or not so I'm going to click on run yes replace the one that we already have we're over here you can see that now we have that button so now I'll go over here and I'll say 5 plus 5 I'll say I'll ask it to answer the question and you can see that we get something weird over here that 
It's meant to be the answer. So let's ask something else. Let's actually ask the example that we have here. Amy has five apples. She loses one apple. How many apples does Amy have now? And I'll click answer the question. Okay, so we can see that there is something weird going on. Things are not actually updating properly, so let's try and understand why. So it seems like we didn't actually get a response from that last one, and that could be because it was too hard to answer. So let's go ahead and run this app again. So now let's do it again. Amy has five apples. David eats two apples from Amy. How many apples does Amy have left? Let's click on answer the question and it answers it for us. So it says Amy has three apples left. Let's go ahead and run this again. And this time we can ask anything else. So we can say something like write a short email asking or let's say something like write a resignation letter answer question and once I click on it it should take a few seconds and then it will actually answer it the name of your boss or whoever your letter is for the name of your boss or whoever letter is address to write a resignation letter there we go now I want this app to be more focused on math questions so I'll come over here and I'll place that prompt that we have at the very beginning and I'll put it like this. And that way if I run this, OpenAI will actually get a more unifo unified request because it always has the instructions on what it's meant to do, which is enter the following prompt. So let's go back and over here we can say something like, David is driving at 60 kilometers an hour. His destination is 50 kilometers away. How long is it going to take David to arrive to his destination? And if I click on answer question, I believe we should get a good answer. So it says it will take David one hour to arrive at his destination. And then it says again, it will take David one hour to arrive at his destination. So you can see that this app actually does request an actual answer from OpenAI and it processes it. Now, you may want to work obviously on the presentation or the layer of the app, but in terms of functionality, you are actually getting to interact with OpenAI. And the possibilities with this are insane. You can really do so much with OpenAI. And now that you can integrate it with iOS, or now that you can see how to integrate it with iOS, I'm sure you'll do amazing applications. Now, please make sure that you check out the links that I have in the description, because they do have some very useful apps that I've worked on before. Some are also included, including integration with OpenAI. So have a look at them already on the App Store and try leaving me a like or a comment on how I can improve as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you soon in the next episode.